Radio 59 WROW, first on the dial. And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Zero Hour, written for suspense by Ray Bradbury. Only with love, discipline, and luck can the helpless parents hope to lead the bewildered child toward the grown-up world where things are not always what they seem. But what if the parents were to be denied that opportunity? What if the innocent little children were to take over the world at five o'clock some quiet summer afternoon? Well, here's the answer as we bring you Ray Bradbury's chilling story of childhood. Zero Hour. What a game! Such excitement the children hadn't known in their whole lives. Mink talked earnestly to someone near the rose bush. Oh, that will be easy. No one was there. (laughs) And then the two little girls, shouting, (laughs) laughing at each other. Such fun, such tremendous joy, it was all Mink's mother could do to get her grimy and excited daughter in for lunch. Goodness, Mink, I've never heard such a racket out in the garden. What were you and Anna up to? Most exciting game ever. Just ever. Oh, what's the name of the game? Invasion. Invasion? Well, Invasion will have to wait until you've eaten your lunch properly. Now, slow down, young lady. Do you hear? Can't. Drill's waiting for me. Drill? What a peculiar name. Is he a new boy in the neighborhood, dear? He's new, all right. I don't think I've seen him. Which one is Drill? Oh, he's just around. I've got to go now, Mom. If we're going to have the invasion. You finish your milk, miss. Who's invading what? Martians are invading the Earth. Oh, I see. And Drill's a Martian? I think so. He's had a very hard time getting here. Oh, I should imagine. They couldn't figure a way to attack Earth. How to get in or something. Mm -hmm. Drill says they have to do it by surprise. And even get help from your enemy. Ah, fifth column. Yes. And all this time they haven't been able to figure out how to attack. Until one day... They thought of children. Well, that was bright of them. And they thought of how grown-ups are so busy. They never look under rose bushes or on lawns. Is that where Drill is now, under the rose bush? Yes, with all his friends, too. He says there's something about kids with under 11 with imagination. It's real funny to hear Drill talk. <laughs> it must be. Well, you can run along now so you can have your invasion before dark. Uh, bath tonight, school tomorrow, you know. Drill says I won't have to take any more baths. Oh, he does, does he? And we can stay up till 10 o'clock. Well, your friend Mr. Drill had better mind his P's and Q's or I'm going to call up his mother and tell her... That's just it. Drill says you're dangerous because you don't believe in Martians. Just like you think Drill's a kid. Well, he's not. And they're going to let us run the world when they get in. All of us kids. And I might even be queen. Well, that's nice, dear. Now run along. Mom? What is it, dear? Mom, when the invasion comes, we'll have to get rid of you and Daddy. But I'll be sure it won't hurt very much. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello? Hello, Mary. Helen! How are you? How nice. Are you in town? No, I'm up home in Plainfield. I was thinking of you, thought I'd call. It's long distance, though. You shouldn't. Oh, I can afford three minutes. <laughs> How's Henry? Fine. And Bill? Just fine. What about Mink? Oh, wonderful. Noisier than ever. She's got a new game now. It's taken the place of hopscotch. Invasion. Oh, is she playing that, too? Yes, or yours? Same thing. Some kind of geometric jacks, I suppose. Isn't it a scream? <laughs> All the kids their age are playing it up here. Timmy's got a crush on some guy named uh, Drill. I think that's what it is. It must be a new password. Mink likes him, too. I didn't know it had got to your part of the world. Word of mouth, I suppose. You know, kids. Funniest thing. I got a letter from my sister in Boston. She says her kids are playing it, too. It's sweeping the country. Well, I wonder where they learned it. Don't ask me. All I know is what Timmy told me at lunch. Zero hours at five o'clock. When? Five o'clock today. That's when the invasion's going to be. (laughs) These kids and their imagination. (laughs) Oh, I wanted to tell you about... And they talk a little more, schoolgirl friends, casual woman talk. 
But Mrs. Morris was thoughtful. She was thinking of other things, of adults, of little children with imagination, rose bushes, and their unseen friend named Drill. I will. She thought of how much she'd forgotten about being a child, and she wondered about Mink and all the kids everywhere who, at that moment, were playing Invasion. In just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute, rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Inside the Morris house, an hour drowsed by, while across the town in other gardens, in other backyards, little children were excitedly playing a game, talking to rose bushes. The grass lawns, trees, and shrubs. Even children in apartment houses high in the air, conferring with potted plants, cactus, and ivy. Mrs. Morris had finished her mending and gone back to the kitchen when Mink burst in. Hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Can I have a glass of water? Of course, I'll get it. Pi R squared, 47. A over 56 to the 7th degree. X, T, 7. What, dear? Nothing, Ma. Here's your water. Thanks. How are things going? Hmm? The invasion. Oh, that. Yes, that. Almost finished. Drill says we should be ready on time. Five o'clock? That's right. How did you know? Helen called from Painsfield. She says Timmy's playing it, too. Hey, that's keen. Well, I guess all the kids are, aren't they? No, not all of them. Not guys like Gil Esley and Jimmy Woods. They're growing up. Make fun of us. They're worse than parents. Well, we'll get rid of them. Jill says it's okay to kill them, too. Now, I don't like that kind of talk, Mink. Do you hear me? I don't like it at all. Oh, Mom. I mean it. You keep on that way and there's no more playing. You'll have to tell Anna to go home, and you'll stay inside until bedtime. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Thanks for the water, Mom. Mink. Uh-huh? What did those numbers mean? What numbers? Those numbers you were saying to yourself a minute ago. Oh, that. They're the things we have to do to get Joel and his friends out. That's all. Uh, Look, dear, why don't you and Anna go down to the drugstore and get some ice cream? You don't have to use your allowance. I'll give you the money. Haven't got time, Mom. Thanks. (laughs) Well, I I never thought I'd hear you say that. I've got to go now, Mom. Uh, Wait just a minute. Mink, uh, I want you to tell me the truth now. What is this invasion silliness? It isn't silly. It's just a game, that's all, Mom. We're just playing an invasion. Excuse me, i got to get back now. I'll see you later. Mrs. Morris was disturbed. She wasn't sure why. But because she was disturbed, she did something she didn't usually do. She called her husband at the office. Hello, dear. Hello, Henry. I'm sorry to bother you, but Miss Maxson said you weren't busy. Not too. I should be able to get home early today. Everything all right? Yes. 
You all right? I'm fine. Mink? Oh, she's... Henry? What, dear? Oh, nothing. I I just felt like talking to you for a minute. That's all. <laughs> Listen, uh, you sure you're all right? Yes. Mink been getting on your nerves? No, not not really. She, she's playing outside. She's fine. Honey, is something wrong? No, I, I told you I was thinking about you and, and wanted to talk, that's all. Uh, what time do you think you'll be home? About five, maybe a little earlier. Five? Oh. Hey, what do you mean, oh? Well, I was just thinking... <laughs> Nothing, really. Goodbye, darling. You are okay, aren't you? Uh, I'm fine. Goodbye. Bye. Another hour passed. It was half past four. Outside it was quiet. The two little girls more intent than ever upon the endless movement of their game. Mrs. Morris watched from the window, and she had never known Mink to have such powers of concentration. She turned on the radio and sat drinking a cup of coffee, turning over her thoughts children. Children love and hate side by side. Sometimes children love you and hate you all in a half a second. Children, do they ever forget or forgive the whippings and the harsh, strict words of command? I wonder. I wonder. How can you forget or forgive those over and above you, those tall, silly dictators, those parents? What is it, dear? Have we got a piece of lead pipe and a hammer? Well, I don't know. They might be in the garage. What do you want them for? Oh, we just need them. Well, if you tell me, I can... I can get them. Thanks, Mom. Is something wrong? Drill's stuck halfway. If we could get him in all the way through, it would be easier. Then all the others could come through after him. Well, can I help? Thanks, Mom. I can do it. You better hurry, Mink. I want you to take your bath before your father comes home. All right. He's coming home early and... Mink? Mink? Mink has disappeared behind the shrubs. Mrs. Morris knew it was ridiculous to make an issue of it. Besides, what was the issue? Invasion? Drill? Zero hour? Just a child's game. Time passed. Curious, waiting silence came upon the street, deepening. And then from the living room, Mrs. Morris heard... Five o'clock. Zero hour. It had come. And now it had gone. But was the clock right? And Mrs. Morris, knowing how foolish it was... Knowing it, went to the phone and dialed. Silly, silly. The time is 4.54 and 20 seconds. Fifty-four and twenty seconds, and Mrs. Morris knew that it wasn't as silly as she had thought, because it wasn't five o'clock yet, not zero hour yet. Then she heard the car drive up and her husband greeting her daughter. Hi, Mink. Hi, Daddy. How's it going? Fine. Got a kiss for me? I haven't got time now, Daddy. That's a nice thing. What are you doing? We're playing Invasion. Swell. Your mother in the house? Yes. Okay, be good. I will. Zero hour in a few minutes, Daddy. All right, I'll be ready. Mary? In the living room, dear. Hi. Our uh, daughter didn't have time for a kiss. How about you? <laughs> Hi, Dave. Uh, not particularly. Would you like a cocktail? You read my mind. Martini? Perfect. Anything exciting happen today? No. Oh, Helen called. Oh? 
From Plainfield. I told her she was crazy, but she just felt like calling. Like you calling me this afternoon. Crazy, huh? What was that all about? I told you. I I wanted to. Ah. Uh, hey, um, incidentally, what's this new game the kid's playing? Invasion? That's a nice, depressing thought. Is Mink all right? Come to think of it, she, she looked kind of funny. Yes, she's all right. What's the time, Henry? A couple of minutes after five. Why? No, the clock's wrong. By your watch. Huh? Oh, I've got uh, two minutes, too. I'm probably slow. You got something on the stove? No, no, I, I, I just want... Honey, hey, um, look at me. What's the matter? Nothing. Really? No. Really? Mink's been up to something. Of course not. Then what? I, I guess I'm a little tired. Up, upset, that's all. You want to go out for dinner? No, I, I've got a steak in the icebox. Tell you what, I'll barbecue it. How'd that be? Fine. What was that? What? I thought I heard something. I didn't. I, I, I must have been imagining it. You are jumpy. Why don't you have a drink? Do you good. I don't want one. What time is it now? Mary, what is this? I mean it. Something's wrong. Now, I want to know... It, it's silly, Henry. It, it's so silly. I, I'm on edge, that's all. I, I, I don't just... like it. That kid's done something, hasn't she? I'm going to get her in here. No, Henry, please. Please don't. She hasn't... It's nothing at all. I, I just... What's that? I don't know. Those kids haven't got anything dangerous out there, have they? I, I noticed a lot of junk lying around. I, I thought it was a game. She wouldn't have done it herself. They've made her do it. What the devil? Maybe you'd better go out and tell them to stop playing now. It's after five. You tell Mink to put off the invasion until tomorrow. Tell her that... What are they up to? I better take a look. Mink! Mink! Good Lord, it's outside there. No, it's upstairs. I, I know it is. In the attic. But Mary, Mary, it's not up there. It's outside. It's in the attic. That's where it is. Her mind had worked that quickly. Any excuse to get her husband away from the outside, to get him upstairs to the attic in time. And outside, there were more eerie explosions, and they could hear the children screaming with delight. It's not in the attic. It's outside. Mink's out there. What's the matter with you? No, no, Henry, I'll show you. Hurry. Get inside, quick. Now we're safe until tonight. Maybe we can sneak out later. Maybe we can escape. Are you crazy? Why did you throw the key away? For heaven's sake, the kid's out there. Do you want her to... Oh, you don't know. You, you, you don't... We've got to stay here, Henry. We've got to. You've got to stay here with me. I don't know how the devil I can get out. Where's that light switch? Be quiet, please. Be quiet. They'll hear us. They'll find us. Henry, please. There's that noise. It's in this house now. Mary, what is this? Oh. Mary, what's happening? You know... Answer me. Stop that. Mary, somebody's downstairs. <laughs> Who's down there? Oh, no. Who? No, no, no. No, hush, hush. Please be quiet. Please, they might go away. Please. And between his wife's terror and the electric humming from below, Mr. Morris felt a great fear. They trembled together in silence in the attic. Mr. and Mrs. Morris, parents of the little girl named Mink. Then they heard steps coming up the stairs and a voice. Mommy? Daddy? Where are you? And a queer, cold light became visible under the door crack. A strange odor and the alien sound of eagerness in Mink's voice was almost more than they could bear. And another sound. And the lock to the attic door melted. Mink 
<laughs> Mink with bright little eyes and tousled hair peered inside, and behind her, tall, wavering blue shadows. Frightful shadows. Peekaboo! Have you ever wondered what people abroad think of us? Many of them don't have a very high opinion of our country or our way of life. It's not because of anything we've done or haven't done. It's what they think we have or haven't done. Unfortunately, those thoughts were planted in their minds by books and other literature distributed in both free and iron curtain countries by the communists. This material has been deliberately slanted to create false impressions of America and Americans. But the people who read them are hungry for the truth. Somewhere on your bookshelves or in your attic, you must have books you're through with. By contributing them to Books from America, you can help send the truth about America to readers and students abroad. Particularly helpful are good standard American novels, up-to-date histories and geographies, as well as English grammars. If they're in good condition, with hard covers, pack them up and send them to Books from America, Box 1960, Washington 13, D.C. That address again is Books from America, Box 1960, Washington 13, D.C. Suspense. <laughs> You've been listening to Zero Hour, written for suspense by Ray Bradbury. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Are you all out of tune because you're irregular? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. You'll feel right on pitch when Kellogg's All Brand goes gently to work, relieves constipation due to lack of bulk by supplying your system with bulk-forming whole bran. Yes, a daily bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand with milk helps put you right back in tune. The natural way. The good-tasting way, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Brand is the one brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So remember, if constipation's a problem, gentle it away, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Brand, the good food way to keep regular as clockwork. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. At your grocer. <laughs> Tonight's story were Francie Myers as Mink, Ginger Jones as Mrs. M, and John Gibson as Henry. Others in the cast included Vivian Smolin and Sarah Fussell. Listen again next week when we return with The Long Night, written especially for suspense by Walter Black. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense on CBS radio